Hey, over across the ditch there to New Zealand, um, New Zealand Herald says there are six cannabis related companies to watch, so you'll find the link down below. But I'll go to the New Zealand Herald section, um, and the date of this article was uh, the 1st of February, round February anyway, by Damien Venoto. So he makes a few points um, about these. Uh, ventures that uh, with cannabis in New Zealand. Type the word cannabis into New Zealand's business directory on the company's official website and you'll get a full three pages of business, most of them incorporated in the past two years. That only scrapes the surface and doesn't begin to dwell into the titles with slightly more creative names such as variations of can, canna or phyto. Like the opportunist panners who rushed to gold rich regions decades before, Cannabis pioneers are also looking to strike it lucky. The rivers may run green this time, but many pans will end up empty, even if New Zealand's legal cannabis industry takes off. And that's probably something I did in my previous in, uh, video with um, Namaste uh, Technologies, where you've got to have deep, deep pockets. Now, just to give an example in New Zealand of a company um, called Medican. Um, emails leaked to the Herald from an investor who put $50,000 into the business gave a glimpse of how sour cannabis deals can go. Quote, I will fly to New Zealand personally extract my full investment from the company, but whichever way possible reads one email to a dealer, please don't construe that as a threat. Take it as a promise. You'd imagine an email like that would be enough to prompt a little trepidation, but already with the mid-cam file still open on the liquidated desk. Some of the individuals previously involved in that business already appear as directors and shareholders in the cannabis firm. So speculate at your own risk, the Herald says. Snowball Fix co-founder Simon Bernard is well versed in startups and he wants investors not to put any money into marijuana that they aren't willing to lose. Investing in the medicinal cannabis industry is highly speculative, with most companies still at the concept stage of the development. The regulatory regime for medicinal cannabis industry is yet to be determined and investors should remain conscious of the risk this presents for the companies they are looking to invest. So over to the six uh, companies that he's speculating, but before that, in New Zealand they have this misuse of amendment bill passed its third reading December 2018 last year, laying the foundation of a medical cannabis industry, in addition giving the terminally ill a defence against the use of illicit cannabis products. The bill requires government to write a regulatory framework for the medicinal cannabis industry within a year. Only a small number are likely to become meaningful businesses, and that's only if the industry can find its feet. So he covers that six, and I'm going to go over them, and you can click on the link and, and go, go through the six that he recommends, the six firms to watch from the primordial ooze of the still forming cannabis industry in New Zealand. Several companies have quickly stuck their heads above the mass around them. The six indicate that there's no blueprint for entering an industry that doesn't yet exist. Each company has a unique approach with any startup scene. It's anyone's guess who will survive. So the first one is Hikurangi Cannabis, founded in 2013, and here are the co-founders, um, based in East Coast near Rotoria, um, and it has a decent start of its competitors. Um, and there they are, Panapa Ihau and Manu Kadi, and the company grew its first crop of industrial hemp in 2016. Um, it's attracted two institu institutional investors. Um, and uh, employs 22 staff, also weighing up the possibility of another fundraising round this year, which would again open the doors to Kiwi investors. Um, the company has already established strategic partnership with international organisations and researchers and growers. One caveat, however, is that it doesn't always pay to be first in startups. In the case of cannabis, the earlier you start, the longer you have to wait in regulatory limbo and the more money you eventually burn through. Helios Therapeutics, um, it started, launched after two years after Hikurangi, but the company's quickly established prominent voice in the industry. 
Parallel C capital, um, the Damton convert black market economy. Paul Manning, who's the experienced business businessman, while entering one of the most regulated environments in the world, medicine says Manning the path to success is fraught with extraordinary challenges. Um, so they have two large organ sites which have been developed in a highly controlled environment for cultivation. You can see Helios. Helios Therapeutics has invested in state-of-art facilities. Um, another thing is they take time for the legal change and with the large facilities, steadily growing staff numbers and ongoing market expenses. Helios will be burning through cash more quickly than other players in the market. Can I sell? Is the third one. Co-founder Mark Lewis, cultivation and industrial hemp since 2002, registered in May 2017, um, and Mark Lewis, the, the, the company is already well funded, having completed two funding rounds, um, has partnerships with the University of Waikato, has received funding from the Agriculture and Marketing Research Development Trust, and Callahan Innovation for two studies on cannabinoids. The company's research firm has already said shown its chops, producing New Zealand's first Ministry of Health approved pharmaceutical grade cannabinoid extracts. CTEC, I think that's right. Um, Mark Mees is the co founder, um, who also joined a startup, CTEC Therapeutics, as chairman. Um, and uh, he is a former policeman. Rather than seeking investment funding from the onset, Mies has taken a more cautious approach, placing the danger of unnecessary cash burn against the risk of inertia. A number of high net worth New Zealanders have inquired about investment opportunities of CTEC, and we are also in discussion. Nubu, another interesting character, um, into the cannabis ring, is TV presenter and former News Talk ZB host Mark Dye. Uh, the company has already raised half a million dollars. Uh, like CTEC and Nubu, it's lost its application for cultivation, but it's still awaiting Ministry of Health approval. Okay, we want to import high quality but low cost finished commodity products, so it's, it has accessible as possible for patients. Think of cannabis like New Zealand wine industry, where there are many successful companies exporting globally. We'd want to build a successful company and also a successful New Zealand industry. To do that, we need a number of successful New Zealand cannabis companies. And boy, uh, it looks like an on alternative to the wine industry. Um, Zcan, another dark horse among the bigger players, Zcan. Founded in 2017, um, it, it pushed cannabis law reform 20 years ago. It says that while others just want to grow cannabis, Zcan is focused on firm intellectual property unique to New Zealand. So it's an online portal that allows cannabis companies to list their products on a vendor neutral portal designed to offer medical staff simple access to a catalog of information on medical registered cannabis products. I wonder if that's the same as, uh, as Namaste Technologies. They have a portal, a medical portal too. Um, ZCAN co-founder Tom Hooker and Chris Foley. The company remains self-funded. And Colorado, with population in America a little more than New Zealand, has 800 cannabis businesses. These range from mum and pop farmers and hipster extractors through to large multi-state operators. But if licenses are limited or made really expensive, we could see it tied up by a few well-funded operators. We want to open it up. There's room for everyone, especially if we focus on exports. They really, the sky is the limit. So anyway, that's uh, the, the links are below uh, for these expert recommendations for New Zealand and their six firms to watch. The original article uh, was printed from the New Zealand Herald. Um, and that article was Rub of the Green, Six Kiwi Cannabis Firms to Watch, and that writer was Damien Vento, Vinoto. I hope I said that right. Anyway, thanks for watching. I thought this would be interesting uh, given the caution 
for people investing in uh, these cannabis companies that are not established and governed by regulatory framework that hasn't uh, been put around that yet. Uh, the potential is great, but um, there is a lot more money to burn through uh, awaiting these regulations. And uh, so I hope you enjoyed this little review of New Zealand, where I was from, born in Auckland. And um, thank you for watching. Okay, bye-bye.